Fatiha, please. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق ونور عرش أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وسيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المأسومين المظلومين ما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب المجيد وقوله الحق وهو أصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة يقاتلون في سبيل الله فيقتلون والقرآن صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات على محمد وآل محمد I begin in Allah's name, the beneficent, the merciful, and all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity to be tested and to be given the opportunity to work in elevating our own selves that though He has chosen us as humans, Allah creates all kinds of creations. He creates insects, He creates atoms, He creates giant creatures like elephants, he creates intelligent beings like you and I. Whales are intelligent. Many kinds of creatures. Ravens are very intelligent. Birds. But you and I have been chosen to be human. Now we could have been created insects. We could have been created as horses, dogs, pigs. These are all beautiful creations of Allah. But we were created humans. We need to ponder on that. For if Allah were simply to put us into paradise without us having struggled, then our value is not that much. And that in and of itself is less mercy than this. What we have in this world today is mercy. The fact that we are tested with trials and tribulations, with difficulties, is a mercy of Allah. But some of us are not happy with it. Some of us wish there were no trials and tribulations. Some of us wish that life would be so simple that we'd wake up in the morning, grow old, everything would be lovely and dandy, and we just pray and it just responds. We hardly have to do any work. I mean, just think about that notion for a moment, where we're doing nothing, servants are taking care of us, you know, no hardship, you know, three beautiful meals a day, you know, masseuse is waiting for you to give you full body massage every day. You're living in a beautiful palace, looking out, you know, out, out looking the, um, the ocean or the beach or whatever you like. You say, ah, that's it. That level of, you know, what we call decadence. How many of us would want that? Now you might say, but I want it, brother. I like that. But think of the net result. You'd be bored, lazy, irritable. Kings built gigantic palaces. They had harems of women, thousands. Any woman they wanted, even if they were married, they would point and the woman was taken. They did it. They tried it. And they became so depressed. They became so depressed and hopeless within themselves that they gave it all up. They, they locked their doors and became completely insular and refused to associate with humanity because that level of decadence is the most impurifying way of life. 
But we all want it. We want the pleasures and the happiness. But this world is not meant for it. If you and I live in gigantic palaces and with luxury, with no struggle, it's a dangerous way of living. Struggle is... that when we look for jobs in fact we don't even have to look for jobs the employers will be looking for us they will send limousines to our homes because we are so desired why? because we are masters of struggle when Allah says ya yuwal insan innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan fa mulaqi O mankind, struggle upon struggle till you meet your Lord. For life is about struggle. But not the haram kind of struggle. Not the struggle that shaitan struggles. Not the struggle of Fir'aun. Not the struggle of Donald Trump. Not the struggle of Yazid. Not those kinds where they work hard to make everybody loyal to them and under their feet. Where they embezzle. And they're misogynist and put their hands where he shouldn't be. And they call anybody what they want. And whatever comes out of their mouth is the truth. And everybody else is a liar. This is how Muawiyah was. He was what we call a mendacious pathological liar. He struggled. Muawiyah struggled. From childhood he struggled. He was planning with Umar ibn As how to conquer and how to derail the message of the Prophet. In fact, the Holy Prophet said that when you see Umar ibn As, as was the advisor to Muawiyah, in Safin especially. And Muawiyah were best friends. Muawiyah, the father of Yazid, were best friends. And what did they do all the time? They used to sit and gossip and figure out ways on how to derail progress. We have people like that in our communities. 24 by 7. What happened? Who said what? Where? Huh? They're, you talk about Quran, they fall asleep. Talk about Allah, they get bored. Talk about gossip or somebody's problems, they're awake. Yeah? Who? What? Where? Something happened? They work hard. They can't sleep at night. They're planning, writing emails, protesting, right? writing letters, trying to create fitna, picking up the phone. We see it in our communities. The minute somebody succeeds in making money, suddenly the FBI raids them. Now, you might think, well, maybe they're doing something fishy. But then the FBI tells them, well, we didn't know about you, but your own people called us. Or if you have a gas station and somebody across the street lowers it by one penny, you take a shotgun and go shoot him. We work hard. We're ready to go to jail. We're ready to die for the penny. Not that struggle. We build these schools, the gossip. Oh, what's it all about? What are they doing? What are they teaching? Really? It's all about money?
Sure, you can struggle, but you can struggle positively or you can struggle negatively. And the Prophet said to Ibn Abbas, he says, when you see Muawiyah and Umar ibn As sitting together, sit between them. One time they were sitting and Ibn Abbas comes sits between them. And Muawiyah says to him, you couldn't find a spot? You sat between us? He said, the Prophet told me when the two of you sit together, I need to sit between the two of you. Quran says, Ya ladina amanu, in ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'in, fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bi jahalatin fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimeen. Or you believe, when a troublemaker comes with you to you with not with news, فَتَبَيَّنُوا Validate. Pick up the phone and say, hold on. You have accused somebody. You Sleeping. But at least 16 hours they're busy manufacturing gossip. So when they are 60, 50 years old, you're asking them to know one verse of Quran? I don't know. Yeah, because you were busy. You were hard working. This is the struggle Allah wants us to do. Who? The one who hastens to forgiveness. The one who hastens to protection. Maghfira, the root word ghafara in Arabic has many meanings. Two main meanings is to seek forgiveness and the other meaning is to seek protection. They are both actually interchangeable. For when you ask for forgiveness, you are asking for protection. And when you're asking for protection, you are asking for forgiveness. Wasariyo, hasten. Ila maghfiratin rabbikum wa jannatin ardu wa samawatu wal ardu. Allah says when you struggle that way, there is a paradise greater for you than the earth and the sky put together. The earth and sky put together, the paradise that awaits us is greater. You see? Because we struggle. It's a reminder for the God conscious. Who's the God conscious? They work hard to do good. They work hard to stop gossip. They work hard to prevent lies. They work hard against fitna. When Allah says, Dahar al fasadu fil barri wal bahri bima kasabat aidiyan nas. Mischief has spread on land and the seas by the hands of mankind. Dahar al fasadu fil barri. Fasad, mischief. And if you examine the history of all our 124,000 prophets, you examine the history of all our imams, what did they suffer? What was their trial? The mischief. Nuh alayhi salam suffered with mischief. They used to hit him, call him names, taunt him. Ibrahim alayhi salam taunt him, hit him. See? All our prophets, 
Isa alayhi salam, Jesus was bothered by the people so much, they even went to snitch to the Romans. He came to guide them, they came to destroy him. But before he came, they were praying to God, send us, send us a helper. Send us a messenger. Allah says, when we send them, your mischief kills them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. How much mischief? Mischief every day. Even when he moved to Medina, mischief, mischief, mischief. Even when he's dying, mischief. He dies, mischief. As soon as his death is taking place, mischief. Fitna, 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 lies, fitna, die. Pull the sword out, kill, 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 kill. Prophets are saying, join us. Struggle with us in a positive way. You have two potentials in your free will, positive and negative, thesis, antithesis. Manage it, be positive, and be a man of synthesis who understands the combination of the two, and you're progressive. We're not. Sadly, we're not. And Allah will hold us liable. People say, brother, why? two-faced creatures who are Trojans in our societies and they cause fitna within us and they cause our societies to be derailed and many a good people lose desire to want to do more but that's where the key lies Allah says you want to do my work stand up keep your faces upright stand Aqim as salah Stand up. But Ya Allah, when I stand up and I hold your banner, they're going to shoot at me. Allah says, that's what I like. For if you don't do that, they will bury you. They will destroy you. And even after they kill you, they will be so angry. They will mutilate you the way Imam Hussain was mutilated. That after they beheaded him, it wasn't enough that they killed him but they brought horses to mutilate his body because they were angry they couldn't get him they tried to change him but he said never you will never get me and my shahada will become such a victory for humanity that I will show them what true real positive struggle means my respected brothers and sisters I may sound a bit crass or maybe a bit harsh. It's not, I swear. We're too blessed. When Allah has chosen us as Muslims, you know who will be punished the most? Not the atheist. Mm -mm. I will prove it from Quran, no. The worst human being in hell will be the munafiq. In fact, the hadith states that the Prophet was saying, was like disgusted. And the companion says, Ya Rasulullah, what did Jibreel just tell you? He said, he just told me that there will be a group in hell that will disturb others in hell. Really? Who? He says, the preacher and the one who pretended to be a Muslim outwardly, but didn't practice. As Allah said, Lima taquluna. You and I are not only chosen to be humans, you and I are chosen to be leaders in society.
society. As I mentioned the other day in Surah Al-Hajj, verse number 78, that the Prophet is a witness over us and we are a witness over the people. But we're not being good witnesses over the people. We're busy causing fitna for ourselves. We're busy slowing progress because we are so pure and holy in our desire to service Allah that we put a wedge and make sure nobody progresses. The way there were some who were companions of the Prophet who were more Muslim than the Prophet. Allah says, Ya ladina amanu, la tuqaddimu bayna yidaylahi wa rasooli. Or you believe, do not go ahead of Allah and His Messenger. Wattaqullah, be God conscious. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi. وَلَا تَجْهَرُ لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْدِكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ أَنْ تَحْبَتَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعَرُونَ Do not raise your voices above that of the Messenger, lest your deeds, your good deeds are wiped out. Good deeds are wiped out and you don't see it. Islam is a religion of action, not entitlement. I am Muslim, they are kafir. Stop saying that and look in the mirror and say, how much kufr do I have? How much kufr do I practice? How much ghibah, how much gossiping and backbiting and fault finding and arrogance do I have? How humble am I? How submissive am I? Allah says, Qalati al-Arabu amanna. قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَإِنْ تُتِئُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَا يَلِتْكُمْ مِنْ عَمَالِكُمْ شَيْئًا What a beautiful verse. The desert dwellers who are becoming Muslims, the nomads of the Arab tribes who are becoming Muslims, they were wild, very wild. Their akhlaq was rough and tough and belligerent, and they were pugnacious. They were easily into fights. They loved to get into fights with each other. They always walked around with their swords, ready to fight anybody who looks at them the wrong way, like the Wild West. They claim they believe. Allah is giving an example to you and me. Amanda. Allah says to the Prophet, tell them, Qul lam tu'minu. No, you don't believe. <laughs> Excuse me, I did shahadu thing. Lam tu'minu. Walakin qulu aslamna. Rather say, I submit. Action. God says, what's your action like? If your action is not positive, don't stamp yourself with anything. You have no right. So when people ask me, what will happen to me? I said, be careful. We are blessed to have Islam by birth. For those of us who are born Muslims, on Judgment Day, no one will be tested with a more tougher stick than you and I, particularly us, us, the school of Ahlul Bayt, because we have the finest leaders in the world. We have the finest role models. We have the best examples on earth. Hands down, we have the Quran, we have the Sunnah of Rasul, we have the Mawadda of Ahlul Bayt, we have it complete. That's why Allah says, Al Yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raditu lakum al Islam adina. Today I perfect for you your religion and complete my favor upon you. And I give you this religion called Al Islam, which means you take it and share it with the world. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This verse, he says, Aslamna. For faith has not entered your hearts. It's on the tongue. I am Muslim, I am Muslim, I am Muslim. Like we tattoo names. Let it enter the heart. I see somebody tattooing his mother's name. So why are you doing so? I love my mother. I said, how about you tattoo that in your heart? That's more important. That skin will sag. This is eternal. How about you serve your mother the way she deserves to be? How about you obey her? How about you do good things for her? How about you hold the banner? One day you can be a witness for your mother, that you were a good role model for her, that she raised you well, and that you become her witness 
that, oh Allah, if there is any punishment for her, avert it. For I probably was the distraction and I will do anything and everything to uphold her banner. That is my mother and my father and I love them too much and I need to tattoo it in my heart, not outside. It's all surface outside. Habibi. It's all surface. Why not real Habibi? The one when you give the hug, it's not with a dagger. It's not with finding faults or it's not flattery. It's real, sincere, that your struggle is my struggle and I protect you. That when someone backbites you, I will not give an ear to it. And when you are in trouble, I will come and help you for I know you will do the same for me. You're my mirror, as the prophet says. Believers are mirrors of each other, mirror. When you look in the mirror, you see a scar, you cover it. Because that's the brotherhood it's about. The believers are brethren. Make peace between them. Look, look at the verse. Why quickly? Because humans are constantly fighting. He said, she said, I don't like, he like, I don't like this one, I don't like this one, this one. I, we spend so much time finding faults in each other. We are so quick in condemning. When Allah says, فَأَصْلِهُ Find peace. بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ We got conscious. So more mercy comes your way. No. That's not what we want. We want to fight. Full of anger. You come to the parking lot. If it's full, you get out and you rage. I see sometimes. Somebody's taking this, you get out, you want to kill him. So why are you here? Oh, for Imam Hussein. <laughs> Who's Imam Hussein? Oh, he gave shahada. But you were going to kill this guy for your parking. I know. That's how it is. Justice. I'm a man of justice. He took my bag, it's fine. Kill him. Smack him. Kick him. Why are you here? Imam Hussein. Rasulullah. Oh, oh. Really? Allah said, What is this? Your shahada ten is Rasulullah. You are the antithesis to Rasulullah. You are the antithesis of Hussein ibn Ali. Imam Hussein, arrows were being thrown to him. He said, We are satisfied, Ya Allah, by this decree and we submit. Is this your leader? He said, Yeah. He said, Where is it? But it's in our hearts. Even those who have a tantrum and rage, their spirit is beautiful. They've been fooled. And you and I must welcome them with kindness. Gradual kindness. Remove this cancer from them. Allah says, Wal al Who are these people? Allah says, Allah They give charity in good times and in bad times. Wal al they swallow their anger. You cannot swallow anger if you don't have long-term vision. You cannot swallow anger if you lack patience. If we're impulsive, short-term vision, it's very easy to lose temper. Because it's for the now. Survival of the fittest, now. I don't care about the consequence tomorrow, now. I am angry now, I will do what I think now, and I will deal with it now, I will deal with tomorrow, tomorrow. As we say, happy, go, lucky. But Allah says, if you obey the Prophet, if you obey Allah and the Prophet, your deeds will remain intact. Your good deeds will remain intact. All kinds of Hindus, all kinds of people. And some people, even atheists. I've met some atheists whose akhlaq supplants many of our akhlaq. Gentle, kind, loving, forgiving, giving, but confused about God. But their akhlaq is impeccable. I tell them, I said, you know, you're confused about God, but I must give you credit. For your ethics and your manners are within the prescription of God. 
that you are stepping on the pathway of God. For there are people who pray and come out and gossip. They have just done salah, then they turn around and gossip. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah. Yeah, so what happened? So he said, she said, oh really? Oh yeah. You just finished salah. Yeah, but it was in my mind. What did you do salah for then? That atheist didn't pray. But he refuses, she refuses to backbite, refuses to find kufr. So let's not stamp ourselves with names and then find ourselves, oh, I'm struggling, I am Muslim. Allah says, if you don't align, you will cause trouble for your own prophets and imams. Our imams were imprisoned, poisoned. Imam Hassan alayhi salam tells Muawiyah, step down. Imam amasses an army to go and remove Muawiyah from the governorship of Syria. Muawiyah pays money to some of the people of Imam Hassan's army. And in the day when Imam Hassan is ready to fight, there was mutiny on him. Mutiny. There was mutiny. He's on his horse. And one of his own soldiers comes and takes an axe and hits him on his thigh and cuts his thigh deep. And Imam has to call off the battle and comes back and Muawiyah remains in power. The Khawarij, who were Imam Ali's army, Muawiyah pays them, pulls them. In Siffin, Malik al Ashtar has his sword on Muawiyah's neck, ready to kill him. And the Khawarij are holding ransom Imam Ali alayhi salam. And says, if you touch that, we will kill you. Imam sends a message, stop. Muawiyah remains in power. Muawiyah brings out his son, the worst of the kind, and Karbala takes place. Let's go to Imam Zain al-Abidin After the battle of Karbala, he was silent in Medina. The Tawabin rose, they fought. People like Muqtar Thaqafi, Suleiman ibn Sur the Khazai, they fought. But the Imam says, what for? Oh, revenge. There's no revenge in Islam. Islam is not a religion of revenge. It's a religion of progress. It's a religion of establishment. It's a religion of forgiveness. Imam looks at them. Eventually, the Imam Zain al-Abidin gets poisoned. Imam Muhammad Baqir, same thing. Imam Jafar Sadiq, same thing. He had thousands of students, Imam Jafar Sadiq. You know why he had those students? Because the caliphate was busy fighting each other. It was shifting from Umayyad to Abbasid. They were busy killing each other, so they left the Imam alone temporarily. And the Imam rose and he took advantage and taught the people. Thousands of students, more books were transcribed in the period of our sixth Imam than any time in history. And even the other schools of thought, the Hanafi, Shafi, Maliki, Hanbali, the school of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, all of them directly and or indirectly, their teacher was Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa al Muhammad. What were they doing? Progress, progress, progress. In kadi hani la rabbi ka kadhan. Famulaki, famulaki, famulaki. Do it till you meet your Lord, till you meet your Lord. Constant, never stopping to do good. Anytime they got a moment where they could bring light to mankind, they would jump at it. Then the very people who were near him were spying, cheating on him, and the Imams were suffering, suffering. Imam Musa Najafar al-Kadhim in prison for decades. Imam Rida pulled from Medina all the way to Mashhad because Ma'amun the king wanted to use him as a tool to gain power in the caliphate because he was fighting with his brother. So the story goes on and on. Our ninth Imam, same story. Tenth Imam, same story. Eleventh Imam, same story. Finally, Imam Sahib Zaman salam, our living Imam, at the age of five, Allah takes him into Ghaybat al sughr Goes into Ghaybat al So now you find why, why, what is that? He disappears. Because Allah says, enough, you people. For the Imam's effectiveness is only going to be, come to full fruition when people rise. If people don't, prophets and Imams are silent. They cannot push even Musa alayhi salam. Think about the miracle he performed. Musa alayhi salam, the miracle he performed. House of Pharaoh comes back 
single-handedly brings the Pharaoh down. You know who the Pharaoh was? He was the giant of the world. There was nobody more rich and powerful on earth historically. The Aztecs, so on. You look back in history, you'll find the Egyptians of that time were incredibly enterprising. Musa alayhi salam comes through them and he brings them down. What a miracle. He takes them away from the control of Fir'aun. He reaches the sea. He splits the sea. Can you imagine if you and I watched that? If we were there at that time, we were Bani Israel, and my prophet has come to take me from bond and from enslavement and to free me. I would kiss the ground he walks on. And Allah says, come to me. I have commandments to give you. Within 40 days, people worshipped idols. People. People. You and I. We. No different. That's why we need to look in the mirror. Ya Allah. Am I like the Bani Israel? That our salt water didn't dry from our feet and we were fooled into worshipping an idol? A prophet who committed the most incredible miracles nine signs he had to prove he's a prophet of God. Allah says, what more should I send to you? Well, how many more miracles do you want? Yet we are losing each other. Our children are going into these Fortnite games. You know why they're going in there? Because we are not progressive. We're not spending time with them. We're busy earning. Parents are busy making money, ignoring their kids. The way these Bani Israel, Musa goes for a short period of time and they abandon him. Allah says, you know why you abandon? Because you have not thought, you haven't discussed, you haven't validated, you're impulsive. Everything is surface, surface, surface. How about deep? We cry for Imam Hussein because he was deep. He was talking the Quran. He was walking the Quran. This book is neglected. No one has time for it. May Allah bless Habibullah. Zadeh, when he was 13, 12, he used to read Quran every day. He would cry. Every day he would cry. He said, my God, I want to talk this. I want to read it. I want to have a voice like the Abdul Basit. And here he is today, mashallah. 20 minutes he recites. He said, give me an hour, I'll recite. I said, may Allah preserve your tongue for anybody who recites Quran. Anybody who proposes this idea. Subhanallah, may Allah preserve them for they are the best among the best. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Progressive, read Quran, establish, put it in our children, talk it, walk it. You can still be businessmen, businesswomen. You can still be enterprising. You can still be successful. You can still own comforts. People think when I read Quran, I'm going to become poor. When I read Quran, it's boring. When I read Quran, who's going to like me? Will I become famous? Somebody came to the brother, same brother. He says, Mashallah, you have such a beautiful voice. Why don't you become a singer? I told him, if you become a singer, you'll make a lot of money. He says, I'm not after wealth. The wealth of the Quran is too strong for me to bargain with anything else. 
this Quran, I love it too much. And I'm hearing him telling him this, I said, SubhanAllah, that's the value system. What we revealed in this book is a shifa, meaning it's an elixir, it's an attorney, it's your representative, it's the one that's going to give you calmness and har harmony, it's the one that's going to bring you no depression, it's the one that's going to make you strong, it's the one that's going to make you progress in a positive direction, where you're going to stop creating fitna, where we're going to stop causing trouble. I am sincerely saying this, brothers and sisters. Our next generation needs us. They're looking at us. I see it in their eyes when they come to eyes. I see they're looking at me, says, brother, help us. We're living in a jungle. Please clear this path for us. It's murky. We don't know what lies ahead. We're confused. We don't know where to go. We're getting mixed messages. Whereas religion is clear, clear, succinct. But sadly, when we don't practice, even prophets suffer. Imams suffer. Imam Hussein had hundreds of thousands of people. My Lord, make me and my progeny. Rabbi Jalni Mukima Salati Wamin Dhuriyati. Salati. When I listen to Karbala, the story, and Imam Hussein is in the middle of the battlefield praying Salatul Khawf. Arrows are coming. Abu Thamama is standing there with the shield in front of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Shields, the arrows are point coming at Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He is protecting him. Abu Thamama is protecting him, one of the companions of Imam Hussein. And Imam is doing Salat al-Khawf, leading Salat, in the middle of the battlefield where he's going to be massacred. But Salah, Salah, Salah. He says, I don't give this up. We are fighting this kuffar army across to stop. They want to He looks up and the companions say, Amir al-Mu'mineen, what are you looking at? He says, I'm seeing if it is Salah time. He says, we're in the middle of the battlefield. There's carnage. The arrows are flooded here. Bodies are being dismembered. Imam looks at his companions and says, why are we fighting then if not for this? What is this fight for? For power? For khilafah? For authority? No. To keep practice intact. To keep deen intact. You and I have the finest religion, I swear. Finest religion in the world is what you and I have. This religion is incredible. But you find laser focus. Our prophets were laser focused. And whenever they were asked, why do you do this? 
So, ma asalukum alayhi min ajr? In ajr illa ala rabbil alameen. We want no reward from you. Our reward is from Allah. But what do you mean by that? Allah created us. Allah shaped us. Allah endowed us. Allah gifted us. Allah answered our prayers. When Zakaria prayed, Yarithuni wa yarithu min ali Yaqub. Give me an inheritor, Ya Allah. Allah says, Ya Zakaria, inna nubashiruka bi gulam. Ismuhu Yahya. Lam naj'allahu min qablu samiyya. We give you a son whose name is Yahya. And such a name was never given before. Yahya prays, God gives. Prophets pray, they give. But you find Fatima the Zahra, salam alayhi, when she's sick, laser focus. Fruits. What kind of fruits? From a tree. Shajaratin mubarakatin. Zaytunatin la sharqiyatin wa la gharbiyya. Yakadu zaytuha yudhi wa la lam tamsashu nar. Noorun ala noor. Allah says a special tree. We have blessed you with a special tree. An exemplary tree to teach you how to be proactive progressively. So she fasts. She says, I will fast for three days because my sons are ill. Ya Allah, I make another. Yufuna bin nadri. Wa yakhafuna yawman kana sharruhu mustatira. Wa yut'imuna ta'am ala hubbihi miskinaw. Wa yatim. Look how Allah explains it. It's magnificent. They keep their promise and they are afraid of that day. In what way? Negative? No. Positive. They are ashamed that God has given them too much. Have they responded? Have they, are they giving enough? That's why Allah says, Yufuna bin Nadri, wa yakhafuna yawman kana sharruhu mustatira. So what do they do? Wa yut'imuna ta'ama ala hubbihi. By love of God. Hmm? Miskeen and wayatim and wasira, poor, orphan, wayfarer. What do they say? Liwajillah, for the love of God. La nuridu minkum jaza'an wa la shukura. Inna nakhafu min rabbina yawman abusan kham tarira. Look at, they say it now. First Allah says, yufuna bin nadri wa yakhafuna yawman kana sharhu mustatira. Look how Allah is giving me laser focus. Why are they so good? Look, they are focused on Judgment Day. Their day-to-day -day operations is all predicated on Judgment Day. They know God is watching. They know they're under trial. They know they're gifted. They know they have to perform well. They know they have to be nothing but good. So they are thinking of that day, the day of judgment. Then, when they're told, we want to reward you. says, La nuridu. We don't want reward nor thanks. La nuridu minkum. Jaza'an wa la shukura. Inna nakhafu. We are fearful. Man rabbina yawman abusan qam tarir. We are afraid of that day. When God will question us, we gifted you so much. What did you do with it? Look at this laser focus. Every prophet... Every imam had this laser focus. Many of us have forgotten Day of Judgment. Or we think God is in our pocket and we'll buy him out the way the Pharaoh thought by taking gold into his, you see, into his grave in the pyramids. You know why they built them as pyramids, by the way? Because the shape of a pyramid by the Egyptians was that that shape preserves whatever's in it the longest. Silos, when you keep grain in a silo form, you'll find it gets preserved the most. So pyramids were shaped that way, and these Egyptian kings who died thought that by them being in such a shape, they will be preserved. Allah says to Pharaoh, I will preserve you as his drowning. Allah says, I will preserve you. In Surah Yunus, Allah says, I will preserve you, and I will bring you back to the people as a symbol of your arrogance, that you thought you were a god. Well, I'm going to preserve you. Today, people pay $50 to go and see Ramses II's body rotting. And Allah says, that was the one who walked, pontificating, pompous, thinking he's a god, just like many of us try to do in this world. Allah says, look at him. He was more powerful than all of you. He was richer than all of you. He faced a prophet. And look what I did to him. But we don't believe it. We go to the graveyard, we bury people. We don't think we're going to die. 
They will die. You will die. He will die. She will die. Me? I don't think so. Because Allah says, keep This is, when we do that, the outcome are the 72 in Karbala. But notice, there were only 72. Minority. Minority do good works. Majority simply sits and watches. Where's the wind blowing? Oh, is it going that way? Okay, come on, let's go. The wind is blowing there. What is it? We don't care. It's the fad. Everybody's got like a million likes here. Let's just go there. But it could be a whole, doesn't matter. Everybody's there. Fads. We are masters of fads. When Allah says, be careful. It could be a trap. What are you doing? Oh, all my friends are doing it. They're all there. I have to. Allah said, what happened to your common sense? Imam Hussein was alone. 72. 100. Total 110 that were killed on Karbala versus 30,000. It's life. And who was killing them? Same people. People cause bala on our prophets. When Musa alayhi salam comes back, Allah tells them to, he takes them to the promised land. He's arrived at the promised land. His people tell the prophet Musa and his brother Harun, the two of you go get it. We're not going down there. Imagine freeing, splitting the sea. Miracle, 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 miracle. God says, I promise you, go. We doubt you, Allah. We doubt you. We're not sure about how merciful you are. When you listen to the story of Karbala, I ask us all, did any of the companions doubt Allah? When they were going forth and the arrows were striking them and they were getting beheaded, do you think they doubted for a second? No. La Raybafi. They have no doubt in it because their firmness was due to reflection, cogitation, positive transaction. Constant zikr, they understood it so well with so much confidence that there was nothing that was going to stop them. This was how Abbas alayhi salam was. Abbas ibn Ali alayhi salam had many brothers. Three main ones were Jafar, Abdullah, and Uthman. They were present. Some say another brother was there too. They were all from one mother. Her name was Fatima. Imam Ali Ali goes to Aqil and says, after Fatima the Zahra, salamu alayha, when she becomes shahida at a young age, she says to Imam Ali Ali salam, after my departure, marry another woman. Let her bear you many sons and daughters. Let her bear you strong children so that they will represent the message See, when Zakaria was praying to Allah, Yarithuni wa yarithu min ali Yaqub, he wasn't doing it because he wants sons and he wants to enjoy his children, though he's human. He says, I want sons to be flag bearers for you, Allah. I want children to hold your banner, Allah. I want beautiful children to promote your message forever. So that's why Allah replies him, I give you good news. That dream of yours is valid. So Abbas alayhi salam, when he was born, how was he born? Imam Ali alayhi salam finds the genealogy and Lady Fatima, she was also called Fatima. She's known as Ummul Banim. He marries her. And it was known that their women give birth to strong children. And when Abbas alayhi salam was born, some historians say Imam Hussein alayhi salam named him. When asked what does it mean, he said shujaat, firm, strong. That's what we like, firm, indomitable. Rijalun la tulhihim tijaratun wala bay'un an dhikrillah. And he had many, many brothers. Since childhood, 
he would watch Imam Hussein like a shadow. He was older than him, by 20 years of age. He looks at him, and Abbas, by the way, when he enters Karbala, he was tall, and he was also given the title Alamdar, the flag bearer. You know who holds the flag in an army? The strongest. For the strongest one keeps the morale of the entire army. That was Abbas. He was tall, powerful. Since childhood, he was nurtured, prepared. Prepared. They say when Fatima al-Zahra was leaving the world in her was here, she gives the hand of Imam Hussein to Imam Ali and says, find him, get him support. But there will come a day when he will be alone and cornered by the enemies. And they will want to kill him. They say, Abbas, when he was born, he was a child. Imam Hussein even showed a little sign of thirst. He would run to get him a glass. He would run. <laughs> you know, Abbas's mother was related to Shimr, the enemy of Ahlul Bayt. They were indirect, they were related. Shimr goes to Ibn Ziyad and he says, give me freedom for Abbas and his brothers because they are my blood. So Ibn Ziyad gives it to him. And uh, when Shimr arrives in Karbala, as you know, Shimr comes with a command. Shimr was Mal'oon, Mal'oon was a big, was a devil incarnate. And it was actually Shimr who pushed Ibn Ziyad to make sure Imam Hussein is killed. He comes and he rides the horse and Abbas is standing by the tents and Shimr rides towards him and he gives him this letter. He says, I free you and your brothers, go. He's turned red and he looked at him, he said, you treacherous creature. You give me freedom and my brothers? When the leader of God, the Khalifatullah, you are ready to kill him? You give me freedom? He takes that letter, shreds it in front of him, steps on him and says, get out of my face. That's the shuja'at we're talking about. That Abbas was in the center of the army. He fought all day. The battle started at Fajr. It started at Fajr. He was in the center of the command. And people are afraid of him. Historians say the first time Abbas السلام, was actually seen fighting was in the Battle of Safin. In the Battle of Safin, Imam Ali السلام, was fighting Muawiyah. And historians say Imam had a unique way of fighting. He was agile, swift. When he would move his sword, you wouldn't see where it's coming from. He was very swift and light. He would hardly cause footprints, very agile, not heavy, swift. But when he would wear his armor and cover his face, they said a young boy shows up like Ali ibn Abi Talib fighting on the battlefield, swift, spinning, killing the enemy. And the enemy stopped and they said, that's another copy of Ali fighting. For the first time, Abbas was a teenager at that time. He shows up on the battlefield in Safi.
I was in Medina. She used to take these young boys of Abbas, Yatim. She would go to Jannat al She would call the people, come, come, let me tell you what happened in Karbala. This is why women were taken. You know why women, Imam Hussein took women to Karbala? They were the media. They were the voice. They are the ones who spread the message. So Abbas is fighting all day. And nobody can touch him. People say thousands of soldiers on the enemy's side were killed. Thousands by these soldiers. 72. Fajr to Dhahr. Now Abbas was the last person to become Shaheed before Imam Hussein. Tomorrow, we will talk about Ali al-Akbar, the son of Imam Hussein, who was actually the first in the Banu Hashim to be, go and become Shaheed, the one to go fight. So Abbas is fighting, 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 coming back, taking instructions, fighting, coming back. I want you to understand, so it's an entire many hours fight back and forth. He comes now, all the companions are killed. He's seeking permission. Looks at the blessed Imam and says, give me permission to go. It's my time. But the Apostle is alive. <laughs> We're thirsty, as you know. On the seventh night, the family of Imam Hussein and his companions had no water. They ran out of water. So the thirst was intense. Imam salam even used to put his tongue into the tongue of his children just to quench their thirst. He used to share saliva. <laughs> Imam looks at the enemy and says, the dogs are drinking that water. The pigs are drinking that water. But you don't allow us to drink it. How wretched are you people? Abbas looks at these children and says, I must make one attempt to break the ranks to go to the Euphrates. Imam says, go. I give you permission, go. Go break the ranks and see if you can bring some water to us. These children are thirsty. This is Sakina. Buqayya bint al Hussein. She was a four-year-old girl. She's tugging on her uncle. Ammo. Atash, I am thirsty. Which uncle can go and go die without making an attempt to first go and get some water for this little beautiful princess? He alights, I mean, he ascends on his horse and rides towards the Euphrates. Historians say when Abbas arrived, there was an army blocking the water. Just by his presence, the way he rode, the enemy was terrified and they moved. They couldn't challenge him. He just looked at them and they were terrified. How much do you think he wanted to drink it? I know one day I was fasting and I went to work out. And I worked out a little too much and I became so thirsty. But there was half an hour left for me to break my fast. Every second was eternity. That thirst was overwhelming. I was looking at this bottle of water. I said, I, I wish I could drink it. Abbas is dipping it. Abbas is dipping it. 
Historians say he didn't put it in his mouth. He says, I will not touch it. If my master has not touched it, if my family has not touched it, I will not touch it. He fills it up, puts it on his shoulders. Brothers, water. Allah says, I made everything out of water. We buy water, bottle of water here. We drink a few sips, we throw it. Thousands like this. Please don't do that. When you drink, say, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Abu Abdullah al Hussein. We remember your Imam for your thirst when I drink this. I remember you. And drink it and finish it and don't leave it. There are children in Somalia who are dying with thirst right now because they want this and we are throwing these in the millions. looking the tents are far you know the tent was not near the Euphrates he is looking he says now I need to reach there but I've got this huge army waiting to kill me they couldn't face him Imam gets I mean Abbas gets on the horse and now he's trotting towards the tent but he has to pass through the woods and they jump on him and one of them comes in hits Abbas salam, on the head and cuts his arm off. So one arm falls off. Wallahi nhat. Katatun yamani. Cut my head. Abbas takes it, moves, takes his arm, puts it on this side. He says, I'm going to get this water there. <laughs> the enemy says, don't let him reach the tent. Get him. Kill him. The soldiers said, kill him. So Abbas says he's now moving. Another one soldier comes and cuts his other arm off because Abbas cannot fight anymore. And that mish, the water, falls on the ground. And he sees it spilling. He says, I cannot get there. And then somebody comes with one of those steel balls and hits on the head of Abbas who falls off the horse. <laughs> and from there, Abbas says, Ya Ayatun, Nafsul Matma'in Na, Irji, Ila Rabbi Kiral, Yatun Mardiha, Imam Hussain Ali Salam is السلام عليك يا عبد عبد الله الحسين وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم العيد سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين خصوصا سيدي ومولاه يا بن فضل العباس وأختك زينة وبنتك رقية جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم كن 
لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائي في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توام وتمتعوا فيها طويلا أما يجيب مرتوى إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما مضطر إلى One more time. أما يجيب مضطر إلى دعا ويكشف السوء برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صلى الله على محمد وعلى محمد الفاتحة صلوا على محمد وآل محمد